We left off with Russia making peace with Germany in the midst of World War I in 1917, and as a result of the peace agreement, Russia lost a lot of land. This led to a civil war between the Reds, or the Communists, and counter-revolutionaries who were loyal to the Tsar, known as the Whites. The Allies, the U.S., the British, and the French, supported the Whites and actually sent troops to support their end of the civil war. This had the effect of increasing Russian nationalism and ended up feeding the communists' distrust of the West. In the meantime, Japan takes the opportunity to seize land in East Asia, and we see Trotsky using brutal measures to maintain control of his Red Guard. A couple of examples, the Tsar and his family are killed at this point, and if there was a poor performance by the army, Trotsky would line up the soldiers and have them count off by tens, and every tenth man was killed. By 1921, the communists are successful, the civil war is over, but rebuilding is an immense job. Prices are ten times higher than before World War I started. The economy is in shambles. Now the Supreme Soviet was what they called the legislature that was elected by anybody over 18 and so a new name was established for Russia. It was called the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. That of course is the English translation and so in the English speaking world we refer to them as the USSR or sometimes just the Soviet Union for short. Lenin also established a new economic policy, which allowed for some capitalism. There were small businesses that could operate for profit. However, banks remained under government control. The foreign policy of the Soviet Union was referred to as Communist International, or Comintern for short. The idea behind Comintern was to encourage all those colonies around the world to have revolutions against their imperialist powers and become communist states like the Soviet Union. In the midst of this rebuilding in 1924, Lenin suddenly dies, and because there's no election of your next leader, and instead in this type of government, the leader of the Communist Party would become the leader of the country, a power struggle ensues between Trotsky and the up-and-coming Joseph Stalin. FYI, Lenin's body remains on public display for the next 65 years. And the other sort of interesting thing about the next eventual leader of the party, Joseph Stalin, is that Stalin is not his real name. He changed his name to Man of Steel, which probably will let you know what his ideology is, wanting the Soviet Union to be an industrial, think of steel, kind of powerhouse. Um, regardless, we are quite pleased that Stalin had his name changed because his original name here uh, is something that we would find much more difficult to pronounce when studying world history. Anyway, Stalin had these five-year plans to take the USSR back to real communism and to have the Soviet Union become an industrial power. Remember, Russia had been behind all of the other countries in terms of the Industrial Revolution, and Stalin was looking to catch them up quickly. The type of economy that the communist Soviet Union had is referred to as a command economy, meaning the government makes all of the economic decisions. In terms of farming, even, we would have collective farms where large groups of peasants owned and operated the farms as a group. However, the government sets the prices and the government hands out the supplies. In the midst of all this, the standard of living remained very poor, and so there was a fear that people would oppose this new government. And so in 1934, Stalin instituted the Great Purge, where the secret police would crack down on opponents send them to labor camps in Siberia, or in extreme cases, have them killed. In particular, wealthy peasants known as kulaks were targeted, and the name of the secret police that was in charge of cracking down on all these opponents was called the Cheka. Now, we've got a combination of propaganda as well as a war on religion that maintains the Soviet Union as what we call a totalitarian state, and it also leads to the Red Scare in the U.S. and Europe in the 